Ethiopian Public Diplomacy Network, EPDN, alongside other civic organizations and groups, met with Representative Congresswoman Karen Bass from California, 37th District. Several members of the Ethiopian diaspora presented a compelling challenge to the representative in light of the current situation in Ethiopia that has captivated the diaspora community and Ethiopians everywhere. All in all, the meeting was considered successful. Madam Congresswoman, how do you justify this? TPLF leaders who publicly mocked the ceasefire as a joke and said they will now take the war to the rest of Ethiopia were not chastised or condemned. No comment or press release came from your office. Instead, more pressure was put on the Ethiopian government. Second, humanitarian aid and food corridor. The Ethiopian army left over 400,000 sacks of grain in Tigray before withdrawing. Hundreds of trucks of humanitarian aid were also delivered. Even while TPLF continued its war of aggression, the government of Ethiopia gave permission to aid agencies to fly from Addis to Makali to deliver aid. WFP was providing food aid into Tigray throughout the time the West was saying there is no unfettered access. This was clearly demonstrated as we all saw TPLF leaders being transported with WFP trucks to Makali. Now, TPLF is further hindering humanitarian aid by declaring war on different parts of Ethiopia, such as war on Afar to close the Djibouti corridor, or blowing up the bridge over Takazi and declaring war on Amara to hinder the Western corridor. TPLF is blocking new food aid convoy from crossing into Tigray through these aggressions to escalate the problem. All this without impunity. McAlee. Massacre of civilians and officials began immediately after CPLF set its foot in Magali. Sources reported 38 people have been executed in Magali, day one. 158 were taken outside of the town into the mountains. More than 200 people have been killed in Adigrat. Muslim communities living in the small towns of Gadjit and Mahoni have been murdered execution style in broad daylight and in public. Scores of young people have been murdered in the town of Shiri for organizing to protect their town. The massacre of Eritrean refugees is also going unnoticed, just like the massacre of Maikadra, which to date is the worst committed by the TPLF. Now, TPLF is claiming a siege by Ethiopia and that they are surrounded by the enemy. Well, Ethiopians live in Ethiopia and Tigray is in Ethiopia. People cannot leave their homes to satisfy the whims of TPLF. And what they call Tigray, or Western Tigray, is Walqaid, Salabd, Humara, all lands where the Amharas have lived since millennia. They are not going to, live, to leave their homes. But lastly, my comment, and this one is really, really something that is close to my own heart, Congresswoman Bass, you are not only the head of the subcommittee on Africa, you are also a child advocate in the committees for children K to 12 and for foster and adopted children. In fact, when there was a case of an Ethiopian girl that was adopted internationally and she was about to become homeless, you contacted us as you should in Los Angeles and asked you to help and asked us to help her. I took that girl into my home. Addie is her name. And I know you know her because she talks to you consistently. And she stayed with me for three years. Congresswoman, I mention this because I'm so shocked that you, the child advocate, say nothing in light of the child soldiers TPLF is forcefully recruiting. I thought you would be outraged. And I say they were recruited forcefully because I, as a mother, do not need any research to tell me the mothers of Tigray do not want their children to go to war and die, be maimed, or come back mentally and emotionally destroyed. They're, they want their children in school by day and tucked in bed by night. This crime of the ages is completely ignored by you, the child advocate. Congresswoman Bass, if nothing else today, that is my only ask that you condemn this crime against children, a crime against humanity. Thank you. 
I am here to ask the million dollar question from our million strong Ethiopian communities from across America. How is it possible for this Congress to be so disconnected and out of touch with us, the American citizens of Ethiopian descent? We're a huge voting bloc in critical swing states like Georgia, Virginia, and Colorado, where a couple of thousand votes can flip the Senate. You yourself, along with Ambassador Linda, sat with us on a Zoom call back in October to rally for Biden-Harris. You saw what we did. Ethiopians saw the Democratic Party as a friend and an ally. We mobilized our community in the hundreds of thousands from coast to coast. But as things are turning out, you're losing us. To be quite frank, we are dismayed and disappointed by the inequities in terms of the one-sided way this Congress is handling the situation in Ethiopia. We have in Ethiopia, the TPLF, an out tyrant regime turned rebel with a long history of totalitarianism and well-documented atrocities with child soldiers being painted as noble rebels immune from condemnation, while Ethiopia, a state under assault, is being demonized with inflammatory statements and punitive resolutions that normally are reserved for enemy states. What is the outcome you're looking for? Is your desire humanitarianism? If so, we're on the same page. But how can you achieve your humanitarian goal when you're not even willing to condemn the root cause and the main actors behind the humanitarian crisis with the same level of intensity and consistency you apply to Ethiopia? As we speak, TPLF is on a rampage unleashing atrocities in every town and village they set foot on, killing Tigrayans accused of supporting the government, massacring Eritrean refugees, blocking roads, holding university students hostage for ransom, and using aid to force families into giving up their children for war, all the hallmarks of a terrorist group. Devastating evidence of TPLF use of child soldiers as young as 12 years old is coming out with authentic and verified photos and videos. Some have even been published on the New York Times. But this is not even becoming a topic of discussion in Congress. If anything, this alone should have been enough for Congress to call out for the TPLF to disarm. Congresswoman, you've been a long time friend to the Ethiopian people, but what does it mean to you to see the disintegration of Ethiopia? the oldest black civilization in the world. Madam Congresswoman, what are the options for Ethiopia? Institutionalized tribalism, where the 1% of the 6% ruling class can become dominant again? Or perpetual war for disintegration through Article 39? This is the agenda the TPLF is pushing. Either way, neither options are good for the people of Ethiopia. Why on earth which should we accept this false dichotomy? We want to choose justice, and there is no option for justice with the TPLF. Madam Congresswoman, earlier this week, half a million Ethiopians were out at Mezcal Square in Addis in support of the Ethiopian Defense Forces. And get this, in protest of the United States. This is unheard of, Madam Congresswoman. The Ethiopian people are not begging anymore. Do you want to go the way of Iran? Do you want to be responsible for a 1979 Iran-like type of situation where the Ethiopian people ultimately go on a totally anti-US revolution? We don't want that. We want good relationships with Ethiopia. Congress and others must clearly understand the TPLF is an enemy of democracy and an enemy of everything that this great United States stands for. And for those who want the TPLF to succeed, will harm the United States interest in Africa for decades to come. Because quite frankly, Africans are sick and tired of Western interventionist policies. Thank you, Madam. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, uh, Congressman Bass. Uh, like my colleagues, I would like to express my gratitude for allowing us to talk to you this afternoon. My name is Masfen Teganu, 
and I am the executive chairman of the American Ethiopian Public Affairs Committee, APAC. APAC serves as an umbrella organization for over 13 civic advocacy groups re representing several th thousands of Ethiopian Americans in the United States. APAC's mission is to advance U.S. interests in Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, and eventually to the African continent with a pro-Ethiopia agenda. Since its inception in March of this year, APAC has made over 45 legislators, both Democrat and Republican, in the House and the Senate. As part of its mission, APAC has also initiated efforts to transform the, the Ethiopian economy to lift up the lives of Ethiopians while opening up untapped market potential for American businesses. The blueprint for such endeavor is designed to generate opportunities for American companies with a 21st century bilateral economic development strategy. We, we, we have also submitted written testimony regarding 445 to the United States Congress. Uh, voting is a bedrock of democracy and one of APAC's civic responsibilities. APAC organizes and mobilizes Ethiopian Americans and, and like-minded voters of all race and creed across the United States to support its platform and advance its mission of strengthening and expanding the U.S.-Ethiopia relationship. We are very proud of the Ethiopian Americans' significant contribution in Georgia, both in the Senate as well as presidential last election, which gave the president a majority in the Senate. As American Ethiop the American Ethiopian Public Affairs Committee will be very much honored to closely work with you, with your office, to advance its mission and to overcome the problems that we are facing today. And I hope you'll engage us. Once again, thank you for your time this afternoon. Los Angeles Ethiopian Public Diplomacy Network. And I also belong to the Ethiopian community in Los Angeles and serve as a board member there. I would like to point out many of the concerns we have regarding HR 445. The resolution ignores the fact that Dr. Abiy's government had repeatedly attempted to, to reason and ne negotiate with the TPLF's belligerents prior to November 4th attack by TPLF. We wonder why it never mentions the killings of over a thousand Amhara people in a Maika drop by the TPLF militia. It is mind-boggling why the resolution ignores the Ethiopian government's effort to provide humanitarian assistance. In fact, the government of Ethiopia has spent over $2.5 billion to restore service, rebuild infrastructure, and to deliver food in the Tigray region. We wonder why it does not acknowledge that the Ethiopian government has so far delivered nearly 170,800 metric tons of food and had also worked with many international humanitarian agencies with full and unfettered access to most areas of the Tigray region. In this regard, the Ethiopian government has noted that there has been credible evidence that some actors have attempted to smuggle weapons to arm terrorist cells. The resolution has overlooked the commitment of the Ethiopian government in conducting independent investigation of human rights violations by inviting the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. Surprisingly, it ignores the fact that for the first time in the country's history, the people of Ethiopia and more than 40 political parties forged ahead with the election held this past June which, by the way, was conducted peacefully and fairly despite doomsday prediction. It also ignores the fact that some of the people you call political prisoners, especially responsible for the November 4th massacre, are being tried in the court of law for alleged criminal activities. Congresswoman Bass. We believe after many botched attempts and lost opportunities, that at last Ethiopia is marching towards freedom and democracy. Ethiopia cannot surmount the challenges it is facing forward towards this march alone. Ethiopia wants and needs the support of its ally, the United States. All this, as the sponsor of the 
HR 445 and a friend of Ethiopians on a personal level and understanding that events on the ground change at a rapid pace. Example, the recent unilateral ceasefire declaration by the Ethiopian government and the subsequent show of belligerence by TPLF. We ask you to, one, withdraw this resolution since it will wind up hurting our family who live in the Tigray region, which it is intended to help. Two, invite Ethiopians of all political beliefs and persuasions to provide testimony during congressional hearings on Ethiopia in order to draw a complete and unbiased conclusion. Three, recognize TPLF as a terrorist organization. Please, continue your support of the position of Ethiopia for reasonable and equitable use of my water. That was four. Five, release aid funds that are withheld by the State Department. Six, support the efforts for peace, freedom, and democracy in Ethiopia. Thank you very much for your time, Congressman. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time. That the TPLF has uh, uh, refused to hold the ceasefire. We do condemn the child soldiering of TPLF that they're using the food aid distribution as a weapon against its own people. Um, it, it, and finally, honestly, uh, it would be nice if we could get a written reply on some form whether or not the strategic interest of the United States and, and that geopolitical space in line with the fact that we have a, an independent-minded nationalist Prime Minister of Abi, is that being truly the elephant in the room that we have facing all this uh, uh, demonization versus the conflict in Tigray? But I want to thank you again for uh, giving us this opportunity. We Would, hope to hear from you. Were you asking me if what's behind U.S. policy is that Abi is too independent? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. Okay. Congresswoman, in light of the geopolitical situation in that region, it is the hot spot in the world. And in the, when you combine that with a nationalist independent leader like Abi, the question is, are we dealing with that issue or are we really concerned about what's happening in there? Because, you know, I know your subcommittee, the good work you guys are doing, because this is telling other African countries also that this is a model, TPLF is a model for them to follow. And if they, anything happens to such a raw rebel group, that the United States is going to come and demonize them just like they are demonizing Ethiopia. Thank you, Honorable Congresswoman Bass, on behalf of Ethiopian Americans in Congressional District 37 and surrounding districts, I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to discuss matters that concern all Ethiopian Americans at this time. My name is Mekweb Dagaga and I live in California's 41st Congressional District. I'm no activist. I'm speaking on behalf of myself and many Ethiopian Americans who are organized under the umbrella of Ethiopian Public Diplomacy Network, EPDN, in the greater Los Angeles and surrounding areas. We are a diverse group of people from all walks of life that are organized under EPDN due to our concern for the people of Ethiopia. As Americans, we are also concerned and alarmed by our government's position on Ethiopia. Today, three of us from EPDN will be discussing in detail our opposition to House Resolution 445 on the basis that it would only hurt the people it is meant to help and also embolden remnants of TPLF to continue committing the terrorist acts they are committing. In addition, we hope our discussion will be the first of many that you will have with us to apprise each other on events happening in Ethiopia and discuss topics of mutual interest. In the interest of time and understanding fully well that you would now, you know a lot more about the history of TPLF and its rise to power, I will not dwell on TPLF's agenda and atrocities it committed since its inception. I will also not go over the U.S. Ethiopia relationship as you are more informed than me on the long-standing relationship between the two countries. In addition, 
Since you are well informed on the subject, I will not go over the reforms that the current Ethiopian government has been undertaking in the areas of democratization, economic liberalization, empowerment, and or establishment of independent institutions, such as the Election Board, the Human Rights Commission, etc., and its role in regional stability. Given all the above, why a biased, ill biased, ill-informed, and misguided House Resolution, Resolution 445. It appears the impetus to House Resolution 445 is the law enforcement operation that the government of Ethiopia took against a terrorist group that posed a threat to peace and regional stability. The entire text of the resolution, from its preamble to the final resolution, appears to condemn the government of Ethiopia for its law enforcement actions and consequences thereof. I wonder what the U.S. government would do if the California National Guard attacks Camp Pendleton, Camp Pendleton or Presidio of the Monterey Army Base. Basically, this is what happened when the uh, TPLF attacked the Northern Command of the Ethiopian National Defense Forces. The TPLF is designated as a terrorist group by the Ethiopian government upon a deliberative process. Recent events have proven what a terrorist group it is. In my book, the simple act of forcing school eight children to go to the battleground is a terrorist act. To my knowledge, even ISIS or the Taliban did not force children to go to battle. The draft House Resolution 445 and the various one-sided press releases by the U.S. government officials in favor of TPLF have emboldened it to continue with its terrorist activities. I would like to conclude my remarks by stating that my brothers and sisters in the Tigray region of Ethiopia have suffered for nearly a half a century under TPLF. From the days of TPLF's inception, the people of Tigray have lost their loved ones. Ethiopia has lost many of its Tigrinya speaking children to TPLF. Sorry. The people of Tigray region have suffered enough under the terrorist organization. Resolution 445 will only exacerbate the misery of our brothers and sisters in the Tigray region and therefore has to be withdrawn. Thank you again for giving us the opportunity to speak. And now I invite Mr. Fasil Abdullah to continue the second part of our remarks. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Fasil Abdullah. I've called Los Angeles homes since 1983. I'm also a board member of uh, ASFNA, Ethiopian Sports uh, Federation in North America, where we fondly remember you attending and addressing our crowd in 2006 at LA Coliseum, along with your colleague, Representatives Maxine Waters and uh, Mr. Colin Price. We hope you'll grace us with your presence when we return to the LA area in the near future. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express my opposition of uh, House Resolution 445. As stated previously, and in the interest of time, I won't go into the background of what uh, led to the law enforcement action. Suffice it to say, the government of Ethiopia exhausted all means to peacefully solve the belligerent posturing of the TPLF. However, I want to note TPLF's heinous actions on the land and people of Ethiopia, including the surprise attack on the Northern Command of the Ethiopian National Defense Force, the cold-blooded murder of over a thousand innocent civilians purely due to their ethnicity by youth thugs organized uh, by TPLF, uh, namely in my cadre, the launching of uh, rocket attacks in Gondar and Bahadar in Ethiopia and Asmara Eritrea, the cold-blooded murder of employees serving the people of Tigray, the killing of uh, many individuals who were working on restoring services and reconstructing infrastructures. Above all, the deployment of child soldiers in the battlefield are but a few worthy of mentioning for the record. I would like to Note that the government of Ethiopia has already spent over $2.3 billion in restoring uh, infrastructure, humanitarian assistance, and the delivering of uh, seeds and uh, fertilizers to the Tigray region. The notion that the Ethiopian government is as exasperating the humanitarian crisis in the Tigray region is absurd to its core and is uh, typical of TPLF's propaganda inflicting damage on the people it claims to represent and uh, blaming others for the damage. 
the child soldiers uh, in today's battlefield field is one of uh, many examples. We believe the draft resolution was hastily drawn, misinformed, lacking ground in many areas, and biased. To our knowledge, witnesses of the congressional hearings on Ethiopia are either extremists or people who believe have no clue of the situation in Ethiopia or may have an agenda of their own. Congresswoman Bass. I submit to you that uh, the House resolution is indirectly helping the TPLF. The draft House resolution directive to the State Department and the Treasury and other federal agencies will only hurt the Ethiopian people and the people of Tigray in particular. We are concerned the resolution will embolden the TPLF as the draft has already done and is damaging to the stability of the country. Ethiopia is encouraged by the current administration's stance that the Gurds issue be resolved by the three countries, Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia, through the African Union. Ethiopia has been negotiating in good faith in the principle of reasonable and equitable use of the Nile River. We also appreciate the Congressional Black Caucus's continued support of the GERD. I would like to conclude my remarks by stating that the Ethiopian government law enforcement operation was forced upon the government by TPLF. The people of Ethiopia, including Tigray, have suffered under the TPLF for nearly half a century, despite what the TPLF would like us to believe. Children are forced to go to battle, elders are forced to give up food to the TPLF and are starving. At this time, the people of Tigray region need our help. We need to wrest them from the brutal clique that, it, that has gripped the people of Tigray for nearly half a century. House Resolution 445 will only embolden remnants of TPLFs and subject the people of Tigray to more hardship. Please, please withdraw House Resolution 445. Put TPLF on notice. It is a terrorist organization by all measures and the U.S. needs to recognize that. I appreciate the time and opportunity you have provided me to discuss this matter. Thank you. As stated in the beginning of the video, members of the EPDN, Ethiopian Public Diplomacy Network, have petitioned with over 100 signatures requesting a town hall meeting with Representative Karen Bass of California, 37th District. From what was presented, it's clear where the Ethiopian diaspora stands in the matters of the situation in Ethiopia and what it expects. The speakers were able to express the community's concern, shed light on facts that have been distorted by misinformation, and presented the representative with questions, thanking her for lending a listening ear. Congresswoman Bass has been actively engaged with the Ethiopian community in her district. She's regarded as part of the community. The speakers and those attended on behalf of the Ethiopian diaspora have expressed their gratitude wholeheartedly. The Ethiopian diaspora is grateful to those that spoke and represented the community in such a dignified manner. The community is prepared and willing to foster an open dialogue with representatives across the nation. The Ethiopian diaspora across the globe is working tirelessly to combat misinformation and advocate for fair and balanced dialogue. Ethiopia shall prevail.